Everybody comes here. This is Hollywood, the land of dreams. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most unrealistic romance movies. Danny, is this the end? <laughs> of course not. It's all in the beginning. For this list, we'll be looking at the most far-fetched portrayals of relationships in film. Because we'll be talking about some important plot points, a spoiler alert <laughs> is in effect. Which of these movies do you find the most absurd? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. When in Rome As much as we love Kristen Bell and Josh Duhamel, we have a hard time believing the love story in this film. Bell plays Beth, the quintessential hard-working girl who can't seem to find the right relationship. It's like, I meet a guy and I think it's great, and anyone else would just be thinking about how much greater it's gonna get. And I'm constantly waiting for the other shoe to drop. In Rome, she takes some coins out of the Fountain of Love, only to find that the men who threw them in are now falling for her. Even with more suitors than ever before, Beth still seems cursed when it comes to true romance. You don't love me. As much as I can love you. No, you don't love me. We're not in love with each other. I'm in love with someone else. I love Nick. Thankfully, Demel's Nick, whose feelings for her are real, turns out to be the perfect guy. Of course, they live happily ever after. It's definitely a cute story, but the core premise is fantastical, to put it mildly. The only spell that I'm under is yours. I'm in love with you, Beth. Number 9. Greece. In this classic film, teenagers Sandy and Danny fall in love over the summer and coincidentally end up at the same high school in the fall. Sandy! Danny? What are you, what are you doing here? <laughs> I thought you were going back to Australia. We had a change of plans. The only problem is they're very different people. Sandy is the typical girl next door, while Danny is a troublemaking greaser. Throughout the film, they try to impress each other, but struggle to sync up. In the end, Sandy does a complete 180 and throws her innocent persona away for good. Sandy? Tell me about it, Stan. It's unbelievable enough that she would suddenly change everything about herself just to become the girl of Danny's dreams, but to top it all off, the two also literally fly into the sky in his car. <laughs> Number 8. Life as we know it It's time for another Josh Duhamel film. Here, the actor plays Eric alongside Katherine Heigl, who portrays Holly. The two characters are polar opposites. I just want to have some fun, oh, all right? Okay. I can go see my, my sick friend and you can go do whatever it is you like to do on a Saturday night. You look like you read, you can go read a book. However, they have one important thing in common, their godchild, Sophie. When her parents, their best friends, pass away, Eric and Holly have to work together. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. You, they picked uh, us together? I'm sure this isn't exactly how you wanted to start a family. There's been a misunderstanding. Yeah. We are not married. No, 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 no. no. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they, they tried to set us up on a blind yeah, date. We never even made it well. to the restaurant. I don't even know he's if you're going to exactly date. I mean, he was... While living together to parent the baby, they realize they're perfect for each other. But we find it odd that any parent would choose two people who hate each other as their child's guardians. And we're having a tough time seeing how Eric and Holly, who were at each other's throats for years, could make it as a couple. I gave up everything to play this friggin' part. Play this part. That's what this is to you. Number seven, how to lose a guy in 10 days. When Andy and Ben start dating, they're both on secret work missions that have nothing to do with love. She's trying to get a man to dump her within 10 days for an article she's writing. Meanwhile, he's trying to prove that he could win a woman's heart within that time frame. Oh, you are already falling in love with me. I'm gonna make you wish you were dead. Poor guy. Neither of them are willing to budge, which causes things to escalate. Andy acts clingy and overbearing, while Ben puts up with anything and everything she throws his way. Haven't you had enough? And look, I'm willing to do anything. Get up. I'll do, I'll do anything, Andy. Despite an insane amount of turmoil, they fall for each other. And somehow, the lies aren't a deal breaker. 
Everything from the scheming to the chaos to the eventual happy ending has us wondering what reality this film takes place in. Oh, Philip, that's ridiculous. You couldn't possibly. Don't be so sure. Number six, Never Been Kissed. In this romantic flick, we meet naive young writer Josie Geller. One day, her job sends her back to high school to report on what teenagers are up to. Josie, maybe you should turn <gasps> it down. Why? You don't think I can do it? No, no, it's just, it's, it's just, this is a lot of pressure for your first piece, that's all. I mean, this is not a half a page article, Josie. This is a major undercover piece. As if that wasn't strange enough, Josie then develops feelings for her English teacher, who's obviously under the impression that she's a student. We rarely find these inappropriate romance tropes to be realistic in films, but this one really takes the cake. All I can tell you is that when you're my age, guys will be lined up around the block for you. You have to say that because you're my teacher. <laughs> Actually, I shouldn't say that because I'm your teacher. And the story becomes even more unbelievable when Josie's brother, Rob, masquerades as a high schooler to help her with the undercover report. Needless to say, we have some questions. Namely, how does nobody realize these people are adults? I don't care about being your stupid prom queen. I'm 25 years old! Number five, The Notebook. While Ali and Noah's love story is memorable, it definitely isn't super plausible. When they first meet, she has no interest in him. No! No? No! No. Hey, Pat, she just told you. Why not? I don't know, because I don't want to. Noah! All right, well, you leave me no other choice then. Ah! Oh, my God! After she reluctantly agrees to a date, they quickly fall in love. But because of outside influences, their romance is short-lived. Years later, Noah is still pining for Ali and even builds her dream house without her knowing. She hasn't forgotten their love either and ends up leaving her fiancé to be with him. It wasn't over. It still isn't over. Even more improbable is the fact that the two are still together in their old age. And despite her memory loss, it's clear that Noah and Ali love each other just as much as they did in their youth. They even pass away together, hand in hand. Good night. Good night. I'll be seeing you. Number four, Pretty Woman. Seeing a young Julia Roberts as Vivian Ward alongside the always charming Richard Gere's Edward Lewis is a total treat. But sadly, this far-fetched romance could only ever exist on the silver screen. I want the fairy tale. Impossible relationships. For one thing, the duo's lifestyles are completely mismatched. Plus, it's not every day that a rich, successful man gets lost in Hollywood and trusts a lady of the night to get him to his hotel. For five bucks. Ridiculous. The price just went up to ten. You can't charge me for directions. I can do anything I want to, baby. I ain't lost. It's also quite unlikely that he would then wine and dine her, shower her with gifts, and ultimately end up with her. But when Disney is involved in a movie with this kind of premise, you know it'll have a happy ending. So what happened after he climbed up the tower and rescued her? She rescues him right back. Number three, Serendipity. There's probably no film that's filled with more unrealistic coincidences than this one. So I just think that Fate sends us little signs, and it's how we read the signs that determines whether we're happy or not. Little signals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fortunate accidents, lucky discoveries. When Sarah and Jonathan first meet, it's clear that there's a connection between them, but instead of exploring it further, they decide to put their future into the hands of destiny. This is just wrong. You don't just have the most incredible night of your life with a perfect stranger and then leave it all to chance, do you? Do you? It's a quaint concept, but we honestly don't think anybody would adopt such a silly plan in the real world. In the years that follow, they maintain rather serious relationships with other people, despite their yearning to be with one another. In the end, a series of unconvincing moments lead them back together, which makes us think they should have just pursued things when they met the first time. You don't have to understand, you just have to have faith. Faith in what? Destiny. Number two. Fifty Shades of Grey. 
This 2015 film is based on a novel that was originally written as Twilight fan fiction, so we shouldn't be surprised that it doesn't have the most realistic storyline. I have rules. If you follow them, I'll reward you. If you don't, I'll punish you. You'd punish me like you'd use this stuff on me? Anastasia Steele is an awkward university student. She's introduced to a whole new world when she meets Christian Grey, a thriving businessman with some very specific preferences in the bedroom. Or should we say, playroom? It's just beyond this door. What is? My playroom. Like your Xbox and stuff? These two could not be more incompatible and suffered numerous ups and downs throughout the course of their relationship. In fact, there's enough drama to last three movies. While they don't end up together in the first instalment, they're married with a kid and another on the way by the very end. Need we say more? Now, if you could only cook, you'd be perfect. Oh, God. Okay. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Twilight this 2008 movie is another tale of a rich, good-looking guy falling for an awkward, quiet girl. Bella Swan makes the move to Washington State, where she meets Edward Cullen. But as they start to connect, she can tell something's different. Pretty soon, she realizes that he's a vampire. I've never wanted a human's blood so much in my life. I trust you. Don't. And instead of preserving his secret at all costs, as he has for ages, he relents. Throughout this film and the four that follow it, Edward and his family go to great lengths to keep Bella alive. All the while, her desire to become a vampire intensifies. The pair's obsessive love is unusual for obvious reasons, and their happy ending is more nonsensical than anything we could have dreamed up. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.